Coming up in today's programme, inner London pupils go to the seaside, find some washed up marine life and get stuck into their studies. <laughs> For many subjects, school trips are an optional, albeit highly desirable, adjunct to the curriculum. In some cases, however, they could be more than that. Today's programme takes us to an outdoor classroom run by the Field Studies Council on the beautiful and rugged Pembrokeshire coast at the very southwesterly tip of Wales. Here, within a designated special area of conservation, is an ideal place to learn about marine biology and coastal habitats. In preparation for the A-level biology course, Anna Hawksley of Hyams Park School has brought her Year 12 pupils to Dale Fork Field Studies Centre for a week of practical learning. People back at school think we get a holiday for the week. Um, we don't. We get a huge amount of, of, of preparation time in the, in the laboratory, followed by two, three, four trips to local beaches, collecting lots and lots of different types of data. They, the children work very, very hard whilst they're here. Resident tutor Carolyn Waddle will guide Hyams through their week's work. Most days start with a detailed briefing in the laboratory, but the impetus is always to get out into the field as quickly as possible. OK, this is what we're looking for, a common sand hopper, Telithrus saltato, OK? Little things that jump around. They live in the patches of seaweed under the pebbles um, along the beach. The best thing to do, find yourself a little patch of seaweed spread out a little bit. And if you kick over the seaweed and the pebbles underneath, Whoa. you'll see hundreds of them. I've got one. There's a star. I All the shrieks and the squeals of, of, oh, what is it? Or, oh my goodness, um, you know, does it bite? Does it sting? Is wonderful to see. Very few of them have actually stuck their nose in a rock pool. Um, and even if they have, they, they very rarely actually put their hands into it and got stuck in. So one of the great things is the completely new environment that they're not used to. You need about 50 in your pot. Today's exercise is to count the population of sandhoppers on an enclosed beach. The pupils first have to collect a representative sample of 50 of the small creatures in a jar, which is not as easy as it sounds. Having collected their sandhoppers, they are given a harmless dab of bright yellow paint so they can be released back onto the beach and identified later. Paint on the back of the sandhopper, okay? Um, and then you need to drop them back into the seaweed where you caught them from and you need to count how many you're painting. Oh, I've got it on its back. <laughs> One. <laughs> no, with your hands. Don't be silly. No, they actually might be easier. Oh! <laughs> Like this. There's just paint going over it. <laughs> just pouring I paint think it's easier it. just to do that. Really. He's already got paint on him. Don't let him jump out. I've got no text for you. Count the mission marker because you're going to know how many you've caught. Do we release it afterwards? Yeah, yeah. you've got to count it and then put it back into the ground. You're going to hold it. So you know if you've got oh, okay. 50 or 30. Why do we paint it if we've got? Because what you need to come back later, look for that one again, 
You're going to collect another 50, and you're going to find out how many have got that yellow dot on. Six hours later, Hyams Park School is back on the beach. By now, the creatures that were painted earlier will have redistributed themselves, so the percentage of marked ones will give the pupils a means of estimating the total population. What you need to do, folks, is have a tally chart for the number that you find all together and the number of painted ones. 13, so that's 13. I'll drop here. 15. Oh, I've <laughs> rule about 60. <laughs> no, not as much as that, I don't reckon. No, last time we had not as much. We had 60, last time, so I reckon about 40. And I need to know the, uh, the total that you've got, so you've got three painted ones. We have some superb habitats here to show diversity. We cover all the range of rocky shores through shelter, exposure to wave action, at sand, mud. It's probably one of the best seashores in Britain. Out this way, if you go southwesterly, straight out there, you won't find any land between. Pembroke and Venezuela over in South America. It's about three and a half thousand miles just over, which means there's three and a half thousand miles of open sea for the wind to travel over, and that can generate some pretty big waves. It's what we call a fetch. So a three and a half thousand mile fetch means that we get some pretty big waves hitting the shores down on this side of the little peninsula that Dale Fort's on, okay? Um, if you sort of look at the other side, if you turn around and look that way, you can see that the sea, the water and the rocky shores down in that area there are very, very sheltered because of the land that you're stood on. I think they expect um, a lot of fun, but I think they expect to just go to the beach and catch the odd crab here and there or the, the odd snail here and there. They certainly don't expect the vast array of organisms that are found down here on the seashores. It looks like Ludo. <laughs> What we're doing now is measuring our rough periwinkle snails. So that's what they look like, little rough periwinkle snails. Right, lots of periwinkles in the uh, cracks and the crevices and things, okay? You have to pick them off to measure them. Make sure you measure the longest axis, so the length of the periwinkle, all right? Once you've measured it, just put it back on the rock where you got them from. 1.5, 1.3, 1.1, 1.1. One point five four. Four point six and zero point seven, isn't it? Really? Four point six one. So, because it's after zero point six and it's not yet at zero point seven. Okay. We have been studying the rough periwinkle, a little marine mollusk, and um, we've been studying how the effect of exposure to wave action actually influences the size of the um, or the length of the rough periwinkle snails. Um, we've looked at two different beaches, an exposed rocky shore and a sheltered rocky shore, and we're studying whether they are significantly different sizes. That was last week. Is this coming out? Look! 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 Dale Fort was built 150 years ago by the Victorians as part of their military installations to protect Milford Haven. Since the war it was ruined and then the Field Studies Council took it on and turned it into a field centre. Up to three, four thousand students coming here each year to have a residential experience which means social interaction and social skills, citizenship, as well as exploring the countryside and the geography covers everything from key stage two right through to A level. The pupils get a huge amount out of it. Some of them have never left home for more than a day or two, so spending eight days away from their family um, is quite a big achievement. It's really nice to see how the social groups mix. Generally, they all pull together. Some of the pupils that you think sit very quietly in the corner in your classroom really come out of themselves when they come to a place like this. Another day brings another habitat to study. Today, Carolyn is taking Himes Park to the Gann Salt Marsh. So you need to grab your group of four 
Make sure you've got all of the equipment that's on the board here. Make sure you've got your lunch and your waterproofs and we'll get going. Before the practical work can begin, there's the small matter of getting to the first site by the water's edge. What I'd like you to do is put your quad rats together get your group together, find yourselves a point along the tape, spread out so you've got a bit of room between the groups and sample what you've got present at site number one. Okay, let's get cracking. Today we are at the Gann Salt Marsh. It's the mouth of the Gann Estuary. The Gann Salt Marsh is a site of special scientific interest. It's also part of the Pembrokeshire Special Area of Conservation. Um, so it's a fantastic place to come. And what we've come to study is the concept of succession, how vegetation changes in the plant and animal communities with time. They're looking at the vegetation cover of seven different sites along a transect, starting off down at the estuary in the bare mud. They then increase the height of each sample area. I tell me if I'm getting in the way. What we'll hopefully demonstrate is how we've got evidence for every um, stage of succession. So we've got the migration stage um, down at the bare mud at the estuary, um, right through to the climax vegetation stage um, at the top of the Pickle Ridge. There. So you notice that the amount of vegetation has changed and also the types of vegetation have changed as well. If you take the cross section of, a, of the leaf, it looks like a gutter or a C shape in cross section. So you've got C plantain there as well. Okay, so loads of new species. I like to feel that we work with the school as a partnership. And I think that the thing that has helped us with that is our unique ability to tailor make every single course to that school and to their requirements. The reason we come to Dale Fort is because it's such a beautiful place um, and as well as the people here being very caring, very considerate and fantastic at their job, it gives us a great opportunity for the Year 12 students to prepare well for the Year 13 course and their coursework is done here. Uh, they get a rude awakening from the moment they arrive. They know in no uncertain terms they've got work to do. Maybe the first day things don't always go off too well. By the end, um, it's very rare for them not to feed back that they have had the, the most incredible experience. When they go back and realise that that manic period of four days spent at Del Fort, I think, yes, that made a difference. <laughs> it's dripping! <laughs> You can find further information on this and other similar school trips by looking under the Resources and Support Materials section on our website, www.teachers.tv forward slash worth the trip.